Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. This is gonna be a relatively short one but I had two stories that were relatively timeless that weren't about any specific thing happening today or yesterday that I thought warranted their own video and let's just jump into them and uh, first up I talked about this yesterday with a different article or the day before yesterday a couple days ago. I talked about the long-term patterns and that rather than looking at short-term analysis rather than looking at where the price might go in the next couple of weeks we should be looking at these long term patterns and now this article fell into my lap with a financial institution making essentially the same argument looking at the trends to predict that in two years Bitcoin should surpass its all-time high price again and they have some interesting graphics here so let's start reading. The ecosystem of cryptocurrency is highly volatile and unstable hence Bitcoin's price prediction is a massively debated issue. According to researchers at Canaccord Genuity Capital Markets, a Canada-based financial institution, the future of Bitcoin will be bullish despite the market undergoing a major long-term bear trend. In a research note, the two crypto analysts, Michael Graham and Scott Sue, drafted a chart where an identical resemblance was observed between the periods 2011 to 2015 and 2015 to 2019. So here you see the graphic. Essentially what they did here is they took the 2000, um, 2015 to 2019 pattern. So the movement we have seen, that is the light blue here. And they overlaid the previous circle stretched to this size. And then we see that this almost perfectly matches. And what happened last time is that at this point in the movement, we were almost at the bottom. Then we stayed there for a couple months and then we went back up. And if you match these together, you get to a value of 20,000 again in just about two years. Now, of course, what I always say, history doesn't necessarily repeat, but it does tend to rhyme. And when you see patterns like this, there's very little reason to believe that they won't repeat, especially when they so closely resemble each other. I said this a million times, when you look at the previous patterns for the market, when you look at previous bear and bull cycles, they happen almost always in the exact same manner in the crypto market. Now, some of this might be down to coincidence, but this has happened too many times now to completely discard. And if this happens again, then yes, this bear market might continue for a couple more months, maybe even for a year or more. But after that, we are going up, up, up. We have better fundamentals, a better baseline, more a more established ecosystem, better infrastructure, more money flowing in than ever before. And that should launch us how, higher than the last times. Um, let's continue looking at what they read, uh, what they wrote here. Michael Graham and Scott Sue wrote in their research note, looking ahead, if Bitcoin were to continue following the same trend as in the years 2011 to 2017, the implication is that Bitcoin would be bottoming approximately now and would soon begin climbing back towards its all-time high of approximately $20,000, theoretically reaching that level in March of 2021. They further reiterated that the block reward, which is the incentive miners receive for solving the cryptographic puzzle on the blockchain, halves every four years. The entire argument behind this part is that the system controls the supply of digital coin to counter inflationary issues. Um, that's not really a good explanation of what the argument here is. The argument is if that um, if the block reward is halved, that means the same work gets you half the number of Bitcoin, meaning that the supply is limited and logically that should mean an increase in price, assuming that demand doesn't also happen to half at the same time. And that of course is coming up. They further mentioned, Although there are different dynamics at play this time around compared to four years ago, we point to several tangible catalysts that could propel the price of Bitcoin in 2019. For one, institutional custody solutions are expected to launch in the first half of 2019, led by Fidelity Digital Assets. Fred Wilson, co-founder of Union Square Ventures, recently mentioned on his popular blog that 2019 will witness a few significant bullish runs followed by selling pressures that will end up being a blessing for the cryptocurrency. However, he also mentioned that these selling pressures might potentially bring Bitcoin to their all-time low of 3,150 later this year. Um, that is not actually an all-time low, that is just the lowest it has seen since the last bull run. Gotta work a bit on, on your language here, um, AMB Crypto. I'm also not quite sure why they brought him into it. He's not one of the people involved. He's just another analyst who had something else to say. But yeah, be wary of paying too much attention to these movements because while we see a lot of repeating patterns, not everything always does repeat. But I think this should 
give anyone who was worried about this extended bull cycle, uh, extended bear cycle, should give all of them hope because we have seen this before. We have seen this exact movement before and we have seen it the time before and we have seen it the time before and we've seen it the time before. We have seen all of this many times before and if you have just gotten into the crypto markets in 2017, 2018, then you haven't experienced this yet and you might be scared. But looking at long-term patterns and looking at the state of the markets, looking at the state of the crypto ecosystem, everything is pointing towards a long time upward trend we might just have to claw our way out of a slump that might continue for a bit longer. But there's very little reason to believe that we won't see another bull run, that it won't match previous patterns, and that it won't go higher than the last ones ever did. Because there's so much more money in the crypto space now, there are so many more big players paying attention to the crypto space, that it seems inevitable for everything to go much, much higher than ever before. And if it follows the patterns of the past, we will see that happening beginning in a couple months and it might be a slow climb. Keep in mind the bull run at the end of 2017, that also started relatively slow here. For a long time, prices were around the same price and then it shot up. It shot, shot, shot up. So we might be seeing a repeat of that. But in general, I'm very hopeful here. And I just I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Don't let this bear market scare you. I know most of you are probably not scared, else you wouldn't be even watching these videos anymore. But I know some of you are very scared. I see that in your comments. I, I get that when people message me. Don't be scared. I know it can be scary to have a lot of money sitting in this and the values being so far down. But we've been through this many, many times. And all these signs that we have. Now, it is, of course, conceivable that none of this will happen, that the prices will stay around here or might even crash down further. It's even conceivable that the crypto market as a whole will crash and never recover. But that's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly unlikely. What is much, much more likely is that we will see a pattern somewhat like this repeat and that we will see a bull one in the next couple of years that will take Bitcoin likely to something from 50,000 to 100,000, if not more, and all other cryptocurrencies according to that. And that is what I'm placing my money on. That is the bet that I'm placing. And I think that is a reasonable estimation for the future to make. And the other story, we have the Kaspersky, 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 Kaspersky. <laughs> I've heard people say this name a bunch of times, but for some reason when I have to say it myself, it's a mess. We have the CEO of that big, big cybersecurity company saying cryptocurrencies are great, but the world is not ready yet. And I feel there's something interesting in his argument here, but he goes way too far and I want to read this with you guys. Eugene Kaspersky, the CEO of the cybersecurity giant, stated in a recent interview that cryptocurrencies are a great idea, but the world is not ready for them yet. Kaspersky, Kaspersky made the statement to financial news website Arabian Business on March 1st. He elaborated, stating that he believes that in the future, perhaps in a hundred years time, the world will be united under a single government, which in turn will have a single digital currency. According to the entrepreneur, the world must be united if we want to have encrypted currencies. At the moment, governments will want to control them. He also argued that in the future, digital currencies will see little competition for use, as he predicts the dominance of a single currency. Some other currencies may be available, but on a global scale, the currency will be unified, he says. He also noted that he believes that the future currencies will be digital, arguing, however, that today's digital currencies such as Bitcoin cannot replace the current financial system. Still, he concedes. Some of the ideas and techniques on which these cryptocurrencies are based can be used in the future currency with little modification, leveraging blockchain technology. He previously expressed a similar view on crypto in the past. As Cointelegraph reported in December 2015, he said that while cryptocurrency is a great invention, he is also convinced that geopolitically this world is not ready to use it yet. Okay. I do think there's some truth to his assessment here that the world is not yet ready, but I think his time frame, what he is predicting here in perhaps a hundred years, I think we will get there a lot faster. I think the cryptocurrency space is very comparable to the internet space, where in the 80s it was this exciting new thing and it seemed like mass adoption was a hundred years away. And then it all happened in 10, 15 years and now who on this planet lives without the internet. Very few people. Very few people who are in very tough situations in their life mostly in just a handful of countries. Most people have access to the internet and it's just second nature now. And I think something similar will happen to cryptocurrencies. 
but his idea that we might all be united under a single government, a lot of political theorists think that is a real possibility in the long term. Um, one of the common lines of thought there is that institutions like the European Union will keep expanding, will keep integrating more countries into them, and then slowly but surely start turning into their own nation states rather than collections of nation states. We see that a tiny bit with the EU, um, European Union gaining more and more powers over the years, more legislative powers and all that stuff. And the idea is that at some point these these things will obviously continue in the future. These trends will continue and at some point result in a single world government where it would of course make sense that it would have one united currency. And given that we're talking about in a hundred years now, it's very likely that all money will be digital at that point. You have to keep in mind that even even leaving cryptocurrencies completely out of the out of the discussion, more a large, large, large amount of transactions nowadays are already completely digital. A large amount of transactions are already happening with credit cards, with debit cards, uh, with PayPal, with all these new apps. And that is going to continue. Why would we still need physical currencies in 100 years is what a lot of people are wondering. But this idea that the only way cryptocurrency will be accepted if we have a world government, if a long, long time has passed, and if that world government is controlling it, I think that is a bit out there. Because we are already seeing crypto being integrated in a million different ways. And some governments are trying to stop and control crypto, but most of them are allowing crypto. And they might be trying to supervise in certain ways, they might be trying to tax in certain ways, they might be trying to control in certain ways. But in general, they are not stopping or hindering crypto. There are individual governments that have terrible laws in place. Some of them are working on changing them. There are some governments who are just running on an anti-crypto stance. But most of them recognize that crypto is A, unstoppable and B, inevitable. And they recognize that and at least are aiming towards crypto friendly regulation. So I don't know why governments would be hindering crypto from becoming mainstream from taking over the world. I think the world is not yet ready for cryptocurrencies as a whole. But I don't think we're talking 100 year timeframes here. I think we're talking 10 to 20 year timeframes. And that is the last I'm going to say in this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you want to read these articles yourself, they will be linked in the description. If you want to support the channel, there are ways to do so in the description as well. And if you want to follow me on social media, once again, description. Thanks a lot for watching.